Hey guys, it's Susan with Staying in Stitches. Um, it's been a little over a month, um, and I, it's time to do an update. Um, I was doing them weekly there, um, saying um so much, but it's okay. I was doing them weekly updates, but then, as everybody knows, life gets in the way. So, it's just, it is what it is, but I do have a lot to show you now. Um... I do have a really huge announcement. Um, I have opened up an Etsy shop called Stitcher's Treasure. Treasures. It's Stitcher's Treasures. Um, I'll put the link down below in the description box. Sometimes you have to click the little arrow so you can see the full description box. Uh, and I'll also insert the name again and the ad e uh, web address to get to the shop here. Um, I do hope you guys will have a visit there and take a look and see what all I have to offer. I got my first order uh, this past Sunday, so I was really happy about that. Um, I've shipped it out today because I'm it, I make the needle miners up as they are ordered and I like to let them dry really good for 24 hours at least before I ship out so I'm going to offer I didn't I didn't put needle minders in the name of the shop because I'm gonna I mainly right now all I got to offer is needle minders and I do have more I need to put on there uh, but I do plan on offering some fabrics I want to get started doing some hand dyed fabrics um, brand new patterns that I've ordered um, just for selling. Um, I do have several wholesale accounts. I do have a business license. Um, so I hope you guys, like I said, will take a look and check out what all I'm offering. I do have several new things uh, some um, that I need to get up there posted onto my Etsy store. Um, so far with my first sale, I do like the Etsy platform. Um, I find it's really no more expensive than selling on eBay, which is, I have done that for a number of years, uh, but I haven't here recently because anytime my eyes water a little bit, because anytime I post anything to eBay, it hasn't sold. So I've just kind of, I don't know what it is, what's going on with that. But, um, so Etsy seems to do really well for a lot of people, so I thought I would give it a try. Um, I do have several finishes to share with you guys since it has been a little over a month. I hope everyone has been doing well. Um, I got to feeling kind of bad. That's one of the reasons I didn't make a video. Um, I got to feeling kind of bad here a few weeks ago. I know I was sick there in March for quite a bit of March, and my allergies was really bad after I'd got a a bad chest and head cold, um, but I do have fibromyalgia. Um, my daughter has had it since she was 15 years old. She We took her to MUSC in Charleston, and a neurologist down there diagnosed her with it. Also, she had, gets chronic migraines. Uh, therefore, while she had a migraine almost daily last year, and now she still gets them, but they're not as often, which is, thank goodness. Um, I do get headaches myself too, but mine is from a totally different thing and the weather, if a rainstorm or something's coming in, the weather really affects mine. Um, it's called intracranial hypertension. Um, they used to call it pseudotumor cerebri. I know, weird long word. And what pseudo means fake or false false tumor. It's like you got a brain tumor, but you don't have a brain tumor, but it mimics the symptoms kind of it basically what it is is where there's too much fluid that surrounds your brain too much spinal fluid and it puts pressure and stuff and I have to take some medicine to keep the fluids down um, but when the barometric pressure changes with when a rain system's coming in a, a storm or something or even if it doesn't rain but it's kind of the pressure changes it really does affect me and give me sometimes severe headaches and stuff and I experienced some of those because it's spring sometimes these storms roll in and stuff and it's been hot here 
Uh, yesterday it got up to 92 here in coastal South Carolina. It's already a scorcher today. So, but that's kind of the reason why I was missing for a month. Um, I was actually, um, I could say at least a dozen times I wanted to sit down and make a YouTube video and update everything and announce my shop, my Etsy shop. And once again, that's Stitcher's Treasures. I know I messed up kind of in the beginning, <laughs> but I'm not going to edit that out. Uh, I have got some haul. I've got several finishes. I've got a piece of fabric I, I hand dyed for a project that I'm going to work on next after what I'm done with. So, oh, um, I probably will pause you guys because I have all my stuff right here, but it's kind of all mixed in with some other paperwork and this, that, and other that I've been sitting here waiting to share with you guys. Um, remember, it's a month's worth, but it's not too bad. Um, so I will pause you, but if you see a little weird like pause, <laughs> uh, it's because I did actually pause it. But I'm not going to sit here and say every time because I'm sure you don't want to see me leaning over and hear me digging through stuff. Um, just to let you know, for all the pauses that I do, that is what I'm doing is pausing it. But you may not even notice it. Uh, I may be in a different position than I was when I come back from unpausing it. But anyhow, I do hope everyone had a great Mother's Day. I had a good Mother's Day. And by the way, today is uh, Tuesday, May the 16th. So Sunday was Mother's Day. Um, my daughter got me a dozen of red roses with some palm fronds in a vase. Um, that was very, very sweet of her. She got me a gorgeous card and a beautiful mom necklace. Um, my two sons gave me cash because I told them I'd rather have something I wanted. I've already got flowers. I don't want any more flowers. Not trying to sound, but, um, let me open up the computer because it helps give light, believe it or not. Um, and so they gave me some cash, not too much, but just enough. I got $30 between both of them. They gave me 15 a piece, which I'm very appreciative of that. That will buy me some things I want. Um... My hubby, he kind of followed the leader of the boys, but instead of giving me cash, I told him I'd been talking, because I told the boys, well, I've been wanting some silks. I want to do the um, plum pudding of Glen Glendon Place's plum pudding, and it recalls for silks. And so my husband said I couldn't find all the silks on eBay because it was a little bit cheaper. Was it dinky dyes? I can't remember if... Anyhow, it's one of those, and they were $3.99 a piece um, on, from an eBay seller. And she had all of them except for maybe three or four of them, a small handful. And so 123 Stitch has the rest, but 123 Stitch, Stitch is like four fifty dollars a skein. So, I mean, heck, $0.50 cent per skein is $0.50 cent per skein. Plus, the ship, sh shipping was cheaper with the eBay seller than it is, believe it or not, with 123 Stitch. So, my husband said, go ahead and order the silks you need. So, I still got to do that, and I'm going to get that hopefully done today or tomorrow. So, he got me the silks I need. Well, I still got to purchase them and get them here, but he told me to get them. So, he done that for me. My other daughter, the twin of the one who got me the flowers and the mom necklace, but she helped pick out what she knew I would like. Um, but she doesn't have a job. She is 17, but like I said, she does suffer from fibromyalgia and gets chronic migraines, so we don't have her work and stuff. So it's hard for her some days just to get through a school day in high school. So um, she does help out a lot around the house. She, I practically haven't done dishes in about a year. I mean, every now and then I'll do them like there's some in the sink and I'll go ahead and load them in the dishwasher, but... She takes care of the dishes. She does some laundry. She keeps the house like she does the bathrooms. A few weeks ago, she took down all the shower curtains and cleaned them, washed the, um, soaked the liners in bleach, and then washed the cloth curtain part. So, I mean, she does what she can around here because I'm a firm believer. I always have my kids. They got jobs when I was 16. And my boys, Cody's going to be 19 in August, and Jeremy's going to be 22 in August. And the girls are 17 going to be 18 in December and I'm just a firm believer in I had to and it just teaches teaches them the value of money to get a job we've provided them with cars uh, you know it, they ain't nice cars I mean they're nice enough but they're not brand new cars there's something if they have an accident in it ain't that bad um 
and they have to pay for their car insurance. They're part of the car insurance. They have to pay for their cell phone bill. And if they want to go out and do anything on their own, like if they want to go to the movies with friends, they're responsible for paying for their movie ticket and anything else they want to do. But if we go as a family, we take care of it. It's just, I think it teaches them responsibility at a decent enough age in their teenage years to handle their stuff. And sure enough, so far with my oldest, he, and I teach them about credit and how you're supposed to, how it works and all that because really they're they're clueless and stuff because they don't teach that in school um and stuff so i just feel that that's just how we handle that in our household um so she, as i was saying she doesn't have a job because of her health issues um she is going to go to college they're both scheduled to graduate um lisbeth's actually going to graduate early this coming january like my son cody did um but Alexandria, she is going to have to go the full year because she, she's in band. And because she wants to take band, that doesn't free up an additional slot for her to take her requirements. She could graduate early in January if she would drop band, but she loves music so much. Elizabeth was in band, but she dropped, she was in it this first half of the year, but she dropped it the second half of the year. And it was probably for the best because every day she come home, absolutely terribly miserable with a migraine and feeling so bad from the noise of the instruments and she said a lot of kids is there was there's alexandria the other one who's staying in who's in band she is in like a advanced group in a whole separate band class because she is really advanced and excelled in music and she's like one of their top best and then she's also in a special another second special class of music for jazz band she plays the saxophone not the one i think it's tenor sax not alto she started out alto but then she moved up to a different one that's all she's the only one that plays that instrument and sometimes she has solo parts and stuff like that anyhow so she just dropped that and that allowed her to, to be able to graduate this coming january early so Anyhow, getting off on a side tangent. Um, here's my little book. I've been keeping up with it really well. Um, putting in, here's what I write down every day, what I stitch on with the date and just quick, you know. And if I film the YouTube video or dyed any fabric, here's the other page. And this is where I'm at. Um, in the back here is the projects to start i am happy to say i am currently working on pink lemonade so i can mark that one off once it's done and add another one that i would like to start um i have a spring freebie which i dyed the fabric for it was a it's a it's called spring and it's a freebie and i'll link that down below too i've got it ready to go and i'm gonna stitch it next after pink lemonade i also have a russian pattern called cherries uh, that I'm going to start. And I think I'm going to dye a piece of fabric for it in yellow. Um, plum pudding is on there. Um, that's the one I'm getting the silks for. And it, like I said, that's by Glendon Place. And um, the Mirabilia Miss Valentine, it's all kitted up except the fabric that come with it. I'm pretty 99.9999% sure. I'm not using the fabric that come with it. Um, I'm going to use a different fabric. And I have a lot of the cottages of the month, the fabric, I dyed some fabric for it, which I showed you in the last video, I believe. Um, but the first one I want to show you is the freebie I linked about two or three videos ago, and you can find it on Brooks Books Publishing. Uh, it's called the Shamrock. Um, I finished it. It's one of my first finishes. Um... And I finished it on, here's my list of finishes. Um, these are all finish, finishes. All those ornaments I showed, I counted each ornament as a finish. So one through, ooh, my eyes. I slip on my, this side of my face wrong. This eye's a little swollen. It's wanting to water and kind of act all weird. Um, one through 12 was all, sorry guys was an ornament finish and 13th was a mill hill the pilgrim i've showed all these 
14 through 17 was an ornament, and then 18 was Mill Hill, and then Brooks Books, the Shamrock, was number 19. Um, so here it is. Well, I'm trying to get my book not to stay open. Here is the Brooks Books Shamrock. This was a freebie. I'd seen someone else stitch this um, on Facebook, and I loved it. There was a heart that was, was supposed to be down here in the bottom. Um, I did not stitch that. I thought about stitching it in pink. I thought about stitching it in just green beads, leftover Mill Hill green beads from kits. Uh, but in the end, I just decided that it looks nice and uninterrupted without the heart i mean feel free if y'all stitch it with the heart if that's what y'all like for me i'm gonna turn this into a cube i want to do a cube and i want to find some really pretty green ribbon um and this is a hand dyed floss that i did do i'm gonna come in close here so you can see the variation i done about a year and a half maybe two years ago and i just had it laying around and i thought and it's kind of washed out i mean it's showing pretty decent but it it's kind of it's it's a little bit brighter than what it's showing but not by too much but that was finished I finished it on April the 23rd so I ironed them this morning or a little while ago um, let me lay that there okay my next finish drum roll please my next finish, which, as you'll see, a lot of people are like, this is so beautiful. I am in love with it. So that's why you got the special drum roll. I finished it on April the 30th. Okay, every Sunday except for this past Sunday, which I'll explain if I remember here in a minute, I have had a finish every Sunday, three Sundays in a row, except for this would have been the fourth Sunday in a row if I'd got pink lemonade done. And I could have got pink lemonade done. But, I was not feeling good, and it was Mother's Day. Um, I put a few stitches in, and then I went, hubby had went to bed probably about 9.30, 10-ish. And a few minutes after he got in bed, um, I decided, forget it. I had not feel good. I'm going to go lay down and cuddle with the hubs and watch CSI Miami in bed. We love to watch CSI Miami. It's like on Wii TV for us locally. It comes on a marathon every Sunday and Monday nights, evenings and nights. So I just went there and we cuddled and watched CSI Miami in bed. But anyhow, getting back to this, this one was finished on April the 30th. Um, and it's my Lavender and, Lavender and Lace Angel of Grace. I ironed it. But it needs to be ironed a little bit better. This linen seems to be. Let me see if I'm back up far enough to start with. So you can get a full picture. And then I'll come in closer. There's the one over one skin I done. There's the dove. Her ribbon and piece of angel wing. Her wings. And then that gorgeous dress. And there's some silver down there. Or silver, I mean gold. Um, right there. This here was the biggest part that took forever. There was this big... This big chunk of white right here. I thought I was never going to get done with it. But anyhow, she is gorgeous. I'm just making sure that where I hit the iron on the gold, it didn't like turn it weird. No, it's good. Um, I'm, because it's, I don't know if you guys can tell, but there's still like, even though I ironed it good, there is still some, um, like, this is linen. So, I don't know how much, I want to use some of the wrinkle releaser, fabric wrinkle releaser, but I just don't know if I feel comfortable enough, because I'm going to just, I'm going to frame and mat it. I just don't know if I feel comfortable enough um, putting those chemicals on it and stuff, but here she is again. 
Is she not stunning? And by the way, this is my biggest piece ever I have ever completed. So, there's the back if anyone wants to see, but I don't, I'm not a back, like, snob or nothing. But I, some people are just interested in seeing the back. Speaking of back, Sherry Burkett was talking on her video she posted this past Monday, or yesterday, the 15th, that she was on an airplane and some crazy Brazilian lady grabbed her wrist. She was sitting there stitching. She said she had her tray. I've never flown on an airplane, but she said she, which I've seen them in movies, though. They got those trays. She was sitting there stitching on one of her projects, and there was this, she had her headphones in, was just minding her own business, and there was some Brazilian lady, she said, was just yapping, 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 yapping. She was stitching, all of a sudden that lady grabs her wrist and flips it over to look at her back and says, like, mm, it's nice. But, like she said, how rude. It made me think that showing the back. How rude was that? Sherry, girl, you handled yourself with composure because I don't know what I would have said or done. Someone being, I mean, it's okay if she said, excuse me, ma'am, can I see the back of your project? I'm just curious. But to grab, snatch somebody's wrist and just flip it over out of the blue? Mm. No. I know we're different cultures. People are from around the world, but there's still manners and respect should be used everywhere. So, good for you, Sherry, for holding your composure. <laughs> um, but, I keep showing her. I'm so proud of her. Um, so now I want to get her up on the wall and to, um, and stuff, but I was going to say something, but I'm not. I got quiet on you guys all of a sudden, but uh, let me learn this over here. Okay. For the third Sunday in a row which was on May the 7th, I had my third finish. And if you guys follow me on Instagram, which I need to take pictures of these fully finished things because I was waiting to either wash them, let them dry, and the biggest thing now today, I ironed them all. Uh, but some of these I had to wait to wash. And I washed this one, I believe, on Friday. And I was so upset because this one's on black fabric. I'll go ahead. This one's Christmas cheer. As you can see, it says Christmas cheer. Um, I don't know if you can see. Oh, there you can catch it a little bit. Let me see if I can get a little, see the sparkles. I know it's kind of out of focus, but at least it's catching the sparkles. There's a little bit and metallic threads in it. Um, this was a whip I'd started. end of last year I believe but I done a little bit and put it down and then I wanted to get it pick it back up but I'll bring you in closer so you can see there's gold stitched all through that and this big C for Christmas um, and stuff but as I was saying oh and look at the details if it'll focus well I don't know if you can really see um, but this is the metallic also right here and you done it like the stamens of a flower where they're long stitches and then there's gold metallic gold French knots at the end of most of them. I wish it would let me pull back a little bit. Anyhow. Um I washed this on washed this on Friday. I hand washed my pieces in ivory. Um, it's a gentle. I feel like it's a more gentle soap. Some people I've used Dawn. Sometimes I I'll just have it Dawn sitting there, but I tend to like to use the ivory. Um, and I washed this, and I kind of dipped the corner and waited a few minutes to see if the black was going to bleed because this is creams in here. And I knew if it was going to bleed, it would turn this a very bad black-gray color. And it did not bleed. 
Okay, I put it, I use cool, very cool, more on the cold of cool side of water. Um, and as soon as I put it in there, the whole piece and switched it around, I was watching for any sign of bleeding. It did not. And I sat there, switched it for like a good five, maybe not five minutes, two or three minutes to just keep an eye on the bleeding aspect to see if it's going to bleed so I could yank it out really quick before it would hopefully destroy this. Well, I washed it. I let it set for about five minutes my keyboard like I said the computer really gives good backlight to show things um, and it turned this this like I said it looked like it had bled into it but nothing else and I was like what the heck it did not bleed at all if it was bleeding into the white it would have the black would have bled into the water so I was just broken-hearted and I was like wait a minute when things are wet, they are darker. And this is dark. It's got some dark beige, some accrues. They're all um, tan color like. And I'm like, well, maybe it's just the, um, because it's wet, it's darker. So I hurried up, let it drain a little bit after I rinsed it off really good and put it underneath the ceiling fan here at my dining room table and let it dry. And sure enough, halfway dry, it was already lightening up, lighting, lightening up a lot so after it completely dried it is exactly the way it was when i stitched it so i i done a little jump for joy believe it or not i was so thrilled um this one had a lot and i do mean a lot of uh quarter stitches and three quarter stitches um but i think lots of times like see right up in here i don't know if you can see those little places right there um that's where some of them are um, the back stitching with the gold, I used Thread Heaven on it, and I think I messed up and done majority of the C in a double strand of it, and, sorry, my nose is a little bit rain. I didn't mean to do that, kind of, <laughs> um, and I wasn't about to pick that out, so I just, and I had enough that come with the kit, this was a kit, and I went ahead and just continued on with the double, two strands, of um the metallic gold and just carried on and i think it looks really good it makes it pop it's not too much um but i did use just one strand for the french metallic in the metallic in the french knots um because it was i tried it with two strands wrapping around and doing the french knot and no that wasn't happening okay on to my current project it's called pink lemonade by casey and i am not even going to try to butcher that name this is my working copy, so I made a copy of the front of the pattern and then the patterns underneath here. Um, but here's her last name. I don't think she's making patterns anymore. This pattern is available on one, two, three stitch. And of course, this is in black and white, but you can still get an idea of what the overall, because it's on my scroll frame and I'm not unrolling all of it because it's going to be done. I'm going to finish it up today. Um... Let me lay that there. And I go. But here it is. Um, I tried doing this on a Q snap, but I have really enjoyed these scroll frames. It keeps it really tight. And because it's on the scroll frames, so you can see pink right here where I did the pink, it doesn't squish your back stitches. So I'm done the and look at the lemon slice. Is it not cute? And the cherry. Oh my goodness. Oh, by the way, guys. This here is one of the um, needle minders. It's a light pink that's available in my Etsy store, and it is a good size. I'd say I've got all the sizes and dimensions of the needle minders I sell on on the listing, so you guys will know. Because some may not like small ones, some may not like big ones, some may like yeah, all of them like I do. But I'd say it's a good two and a half inches approximately. But I, like I said, I do have the more exact measurements. But it's so pretty. This is light pink. I got it in light pink. It's all on one listing. I got them in light pink, hot pink, light purple, white, cream. I believe it's like five colors. I believe. Anyway, they're all listed and you choose your color. But I love these. Here is, um, I, ha I was going to make this one into a needle minder for myself. Um, like I said, I do make them into needle minders once they are ordered. So therefore, I'm not tying up a whole bunch of magnets and they're just sitting there on needle minders waiting to be ordered and say someone 
order some and I can just that's just the way I'm doing it. and that's why some other people do it but here's the cream colored one um they're flat backs um but like I said they are a good size they're very pretty um but I like I said I do have those other colors but anyway getting back to this um it has the date down here and this was the year she put the pattern out, which was 2012, and that's what it's charted for. So I'm going to have to try to change that 2 into a 7, which I don't think is going to be too hard. I've already looked at it several times over. Um, but I'm going to put 2017 on mine. Um, that was the year that one was pre-stitched, and that was the year that the pattern, I believe, was published. But this is the pink lemonade in the glass. That took a, didn't take a long time, but... When you get big blocks of color like I had on my lavender and lace and on this one, um, it, I get kind of bored sometimes. Look at the little confetti. But this one will be done and it, I'll be showing it to you on my next um, video. By the way, I do use the Rare Earth Magnets, um, the silver, shiny silver ones. Um, because I have not experienced it because all the needle miners I ever have purchased from other people and for the ones I use to make myself, I use the rare earth or the neo, neo, I don't know how to say it. Anyway, they're the really good ones. They're really strong as you can hear and see or hear for sure. Well, I don't know if you can hear it. Hear that clink where it's like sticks to it. Anyhow, um. But yeah, look at the confetti strings. Those are cute. Like I said, and there's ladybugs back in there. I'm not, see, I'm not going to take it apart when I just need to, it's already where I need it to be. But I love these scroll rod things, um, frames. I got them, I haven't showed you guys yet, but I actually have a stand that these attach to. But for this, I'm just holding it in my hand. And it, there was a big bag of them that come in a whole bunch of different sizes. And there was two sizes of these bars and like long pieces of them. I did use my sewing machine to attach it to the fabric thing on a really long stitch. Um, it's only showing like this is because I need to roll it. I'd rolled it down to get to this part. But I am, I like those a lot. Um, because if you use the Q-snaps and you do back stitching, especially some of the longer stitches, I'm afraid, that's why I leave my back stitching the last one I use Q-snaps, I'm afraid it will mess it up. Um, I'm going to pause you guys and I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. Um, it turned cloudy outside. It's darker. If I can remember, I got this off a of blog. I guess it don't matter much me showing you far back because this, I believe, was how the pattern was actually presented on the blog was just the chart itself. There was no stitched piece or anything. Um, it was just shown as this and you print it off. It was for free. And it was, oh, here it is. I can direct you to it and I can find the link and put it in the description box down below. It's spring is the name of it. Complimentary chart for 2017. She does have an Etsy store where she sells some of her patterns, and they are really cute. But I'm going to show it far back, even though it's a freebie. This is what I'm going to stitch next. Um, I use these zippy folders. I've mentioned this before, and I went to Walmart last week and bought some more. They're 97 cents, I believe, each. But here's the floss colors. It's in purples, several shades of purples, a couple shades of yellow. This yellow, I'm like, oh. I don't know too much about, or not too much about, but don't. A couple shades of green. They look the same right there, but one's 3346 and one's 3347, so that's why they look so close. And then a couple shades of pink. And that's all the floss that um, goes with this one. And here I cut the fabric. And here is the piece of hand dyed fabric that I am going to use for stitching the spring freebie. It's kind of hard to tell, maybe. Maybe from that angle, you can see the blues, and I left a touch of small, light touch of white kind of coming through, but not too much. 
I didn't want it too strong for that. It's just, there it's kind of picking up. The variation and stuff. I didn't want the weird mottled lines too much. So. Um, this is a 28 count. So therefore, let's see if it, it's just not picking it up good. And I do want to offer some hand dyed fabrics on my Etsy shop. There it's kind of. Anyhow, the light's not good. It's going cloudy outside. Um, but the, I'm starting on that one next after I finish Pink Lemonade, which I do expect to get finished today. Okay, I'm not going to take all these out of the packet. I got some um, Belfast 32 count Willow Green, a fat quarter, which is 18 by 27. Let me set that to the side. Oh, I also got my Moe's Self Floss, and then I've got another one since then. I think I may have shown this one, I'm not sure. Anyhow, here's a Joblin Summer Sky 32 count. It's variegated. These are not going to show up that good. Number one, the light's not good. And number two, for anybody, they don't hardly ever show up. This is a Joblin 32 count in parchment. It was a fat half, very good neutral. I'm kind of going through these kind of fast. Because some people, I mean, it's, here's a linen, a pastel linen, carnation pink. And this is a 56 by 18 cut. It's looking kind of dusty pink there, but it's more of a brighter pink. So I got those. I got this friendship sampler. Um, it got a little bent in the mail, but I'm trying to get the glare off of it. Always fighting that glare off with YouTube. Lost two YouTubers. That was a little. I got this one. It's an older chart. Um, it's by Ann Taylor Nelson. Our House Needle Crafts. 1988 is the copyright. Called Main Street. Even though it's an older chart, I think it's really cute. The flowers along the fence line and then just the street scene. Um, then I got a whole bunch of these um, Debbie Patrick Max or, um, Victorians. I got like a decent deal. I think it was like $2 each. Yeah, there was $2 each. This one's Maxwell House. And then, this is a Judith Kirby. This was a freebie that she put in there for me, which I thought was really sweet. Another street scene. Um, but these are the ones I ordered. Like I said, she put that in as a freebie. Um, this is uh, the Gable House in Woodland, California. Um, this was all in one order, by the way. And here is the Hanger House in Little Rock, Arkansas. I would love, I like architecture. That's why I love going to Charleston. I would love to visit all these houses, but. Okay, I cannot say this. Rhyme Chauffeur, Ray Chauffeur, I don't know, house. It's in Galveston, Texas. I'll show it and stuff. Is that not pretty, especially with those looks like vines trailing up through there? And I do love old Victorian homes. I've never stitched one of these. I do have some other patterns somewhere buried in my stash. This is called Rose Long. It doesn't have a place. I don't so I don't know. Is it an actual? I don't know, but that's pretty. Oh, I love these porches. These big wraparound porches. Now this one is the Parrot House in Noonan. Noonan, or is it? I don't think it's Newman. New Nan. N -A -W -N -A -N, Georgia. See? Um, this one's Drain Castle in Drain, Oregon. And it's a Christmas 1996 because it's got a wreath on the door and a little Christmas tree over here. So this is a, like a Christmas Victorian. Um, this is a, no, I got several that was Christmas. This is Crofts Villa in Rhinebeck, New York. 
these are showing up pretty decent without glare. I am going through them because I do have pretty fast because I do have quite. This is Baluya. Balua. Well, my dog's on knocked something off. Balua Street. Balua St. Victorian. It doesn't have a place either. That's really pretty. Uh, here's another Christmas Victoria, 1997. It's the Davis Johnsey House in Lawrence, South Carolina, and I am from South Carolina. So maybe at least this one I can go visit. If I, They may not be open to the pub, public. Here I am assuming that you can tour them, which you probably cannot, most of them. Um, here's another Christmas Victoria, 1992, and that's all it says. So I don't know if this is just one from her imagination or an actual place. Another Christmas Victorian 1990. That's all it says for this one. Um, this is the Taylor House in Earlville, New York. The Hizar House, I think that's how you say it, Hizar, um, there's that one, okay, and then from somewhere else I had managed to get the um, cross stitch and applique collection, Shabby Chic Autumn, and this has a cross stitch but it also has where you can do applique, they've done that in wool, these in wool, and the glare is terrible on these, and there's the cross stitch pattern, and it's so cute, it's got a white pumpkin, acorn star and a squirrel holding a little charm nut but the charm i do not believe came with it but i'm sure i can find some sort of substitute or hunt it down i got this here i will switch out it's got ada in it and i will switch it out actually some of these that come with these big chunks of ada i may uh surge or i don't have a surgery yet if i get going really good with the hand dye and it sells really well i will invest in a surgery but for now i just use my regular sewing machine and do a good zigzag stitch I can hand out these and offer these up for sale for the Ada, but who's interested? But this was a really pretty, I just love this nautical scene with the sailboats and stuff. And it looks like it's somewhere overseas to me. Um, so I like that. But I mean, I will use the floss. Most of the time, they have good floss in them. Let me open, wake it back up my computer. Um, What else? Okay, another pause. Okay, I'm back. And as you can see, I've put some stuff over here. I have hit up Walmart.com. And I had some gift cards left over from Christmas. And that was given to me. And I figured we're in, well, I ordered them in April and the 1st of May. It's darn time I use them. So, what do you think they would have went towards? Cross stitch, of course. So I got this Dimensions kit. It's by Joy Hall, and it's Love Snow Globe Ornament. I've seen this one. I don't know if I've seen this one going around. Um, people working on it, but in this style by the same lady I have. Um, so there's that one. And here's a... Is this, no, this is Susan Winget. Slate Ornament. Got uh, that one. I must have been in a Christmas mood. I also got two stockings around here somewhere I bought from them. Um, here is another Susan Winget. It's Snowman with Sweets Ornament. So. Very cute. Very cute. Another one. Another Susan Winget. I must like hers a lot. Santa with Bag Ornament. This is so cute. His face is adorable. I just love the design of this one. Um, and another one, Susan Winget. Also, a tree ornament. Okay, I also got for them. This come actually today because it was coming from a different one and it just took longer because it was low in stock and I don't know if they had to wait till they got some more in. But this one come today is called, it's by Dimensions also, it's called Group Therapy. And welcome to Group Therapy. And it's got a martini, wine glass, margarita, 
and champagne it looks like okay I'm not a big alcohol drinker I will have an occasional social drink or when I go on a cruise um, excuse me there's not very much floss in this so it looks like it would be a very quick stitch I would probably use the black fabric in this because you can't see the holes as much um, but a lot of these unless but I will use the plastic canvas and all probably in all the ornaments but some of the kits I buy um, I will um, if it's got like eight in it and I don't feel like stitching on eight I'll switch it out here's another dimensions called flip-flops and it says life is better in flip-flops and I wear if anyone knows me I wear flip-flops even in the winter time on a daily basis practically sometimes I will put my tennis shoes on if I know I'm going to be walking long distance or if my feet happen to be bothering me or hurting uh, I will wear my tennis shoes but otherwise I am constantly in flip-flops the only thing is I can't wear the thong flip-flops my feet are too sensitive and it just irritates and hurts and rubs so I use the slide on kind but I still love my flip-flops and I think these are gorgeous so going to that doesn't have too much to me when they ain't got much flaws like this because they always give you extra to me I'm like I could stitch that in no time um by the way all these come from walmart.com if you're interested including the Riolis Riolis um these are Russian kits I believe they're assembled in Russia okay so you got English and Russian on them but this is it's got anchor and Zweigart fabric in them um I can't really tell you the name of this but it is a um what's those things called where you a biscorn you um, this one does a biscorn you and it comes with um, kind of dark in here 25 count beige Zweigart Lagana fabric and anger floss and it comes with some beads so it even comes with the stuffing so um, I got this from walmart.com and I also got this one from walmart.com like I said I had some gift well I done I had a $25 gift card and so I spent like $50 and paid the difference so it wouldn't be so much out of my pocket and then I had a $10 gift card and I spent like 30 or 40 dollars and took the $10 off and then I've got one more $10 gift card and I'm still trying to figure out what I want and do the same thing um, this is another one of the Riolas right I don't know um, here's the front and back it's like an ornament there's the Sun coming back out some um, it also comes with the 25 count beige swag art and anchor fabric and then metallic thread and comes with the stuffing also and the little beads the little things for the top of the ornament but there's that one um, I've got two stocking kits I've got to pause and find that I also got from walmart.com um, if not I'll throw them in the next video because we're already at 47 minutes this I got off Stash Unload. It's the Alphabet Hearts uh, JBW Designs. Let's see. Here it is without showing. I think that's so cute. They've also got one in the Great Pumpkin Alphabet. I'm reading this backwards. ABC's Christmas Tree. I like both those two, but I got this one right here. The one at the very top. Um... I also got this. It's the Just Nan Morning Flower. I'm, I really want to start this one soon. It also came with... Let me see if I can go with that shot. The bead packet. Which has the beautiful butterfly in it. With all the things. Um, oh, I think I did show you the one with the most sale. The one in the little bag. Because this one can... I think I showed that to you on the last video. These are the ones that's my most recent, but I paid for my other monthly subscription um, auto order with Mo's sale last night. So I should be getting another one within the next. The, I ain't going to show you individually, but these colors are beautiful. These are based off of South America, it looks like, because they're Colombia, Chile, Ecuador, Brazil, Venezuela, Argentina, Ura Uruguay, Peru. I'm not even going to try to say that. It looks like Suriname and Guyane. So these are very bright, brilliant, but gorgeous jewel tones. 
And I think those were new because I get a new new dye cotton cotton new dyes and then re dyes cotton. And these are the re dyes, I believe. Which is Pignot Oasis Condor Hades Kingston Jade Mongoose Varied Bunting Blue Lagoon and Marine. So let me drop these back in this bag really quickly. Um, I also, Mo has, I signed up, I get these. These are two different sets. Like I said, one's a cotton new floss that she made new colors. And one's a cotton re which is her color she's produced before, but she doesn't necessarily currently have them, hasn't dyed them in a while. So they're re cotton re -dyed. She also offers a silk, but I don't get the silk. Uh, she's also just started up, and you can find her on Facebook. It's called Mo's M O S Sell, and she's also doing a grab bag, auto monthly grab bag auto order. She bills you through PayPal for fifteen dollars for twenty three skeins of cotton. She also has a silk one in it, and I can't quite remember how much and how many for those, but twenty three skeins of hand dyed floss for fifteen dollars a month, and it's an automatic shipment. You may get, I don't know if you get duplicates or not. You have to contact Mo for that, but that's amazing. So, pause you again. I said I wasn't going to tell you this, but I fibbed. So, I'm going to pause you again. I'll be right back. I'm going to see if I can find anything else to share. If not, I will wrap it up. Okay, I'm back. I did not find the other Christmas stocking I ordered. It's here somewhere. Who knows where I might have checked it away. I will find it probably and show it next time. Uh, but I did find some other stuff I had to show you guys. Okay. The Bees Garden by Something in Common. I Like I told you on a previous video, I'm on a bee kick. And for some reason, and Pink Lemonade has bees in it. Uh... And I really like how they, this put the, the showing you how to do the stitches and the instructions for each row on these heavy duty cards so you can kind of hold them in your hand and look closer at them while you're trying to keep up with the chart. Um, I believe I got these off of a stash unload a few weeks back. A Day in the Country by Cross My Heart. And these are actually stitched on black fabric to give that shadowy look in these. Especially that one. That's so cool. I like all four of these designs though. Um, some more than others, but especially this one. That's what caught my eye. Uh, here's Lilacs and Amethyst by Indigo Rose. It says it's number five in the Flowers and Gems series, but I just like this design a lot. Let me see if I can get it in close enough so you guys, without too much glare, so you guys can see it. Um, okay, that's something completely, I need to bring it. Um, uh, got this also off stash unload. It's called Sterling. It's a fat quarter and it's linen. It's a grayish. Let me flip it over. I'm not going to really take it out of the bag. It's more of a undertone bluish gray. Try not to show addresses here. Um, I got these yesterday. I believe it was yesterday. And I got these off Stash Unload. And I believe I bought them from the lady who actually dyes them. This one's called Himalayan Salt. They were $1.25 each, I believe. This one's called Sunset. Really pretty and variegated. Um, this one's called Ocean Waves. I'm not going to take it out of the package. It's not as variegated. It's more solid, kind of. Himal or this one's pink lemonade. Various shades of pink. This one's called Unicorn Poop. And this one's called Hippie. It's really pretty and variegated. So that was those 
they put them back in the package until I can sort them and put them away properly. Not doing too bad. I'm at 54 minutes for not being around and doing a video for a month with lots to share. I got this off Stash Unload. Um, it's called Crystal Temptus by Picture This Plus. It's a 13 by 18 piece in Cashel 28 count. Um, this is pretty. It's got the shiny, the sparkly, the sparkly bits that showed up really nice. Um, and stuff. I'm thinking a gorgeous Halloween piece with something black or dark would look really good on this. Here's the other, one of the stockings, one of two stockings I ordered from Walmart.com. I believe this one was on sale for like $14 and the other one was like $12 or $13 and stuff. This is the Dimensions Checking His List stocking and I just thought that was so adorable. The little bunnies bag, Santa with his list, and a bird on, blue bird on his hand. Of course you can personalize it. I don't know nobody named Brendan. Um, and it came with Ada, which I may switch out. It's 14 count, so I may switch it out for 28 count something. Probably the even weave. And all the flaws. And it came with the felt and stuff. So, I probably might do something a little different than felt. May use the felt to line it. I don't know. I did get another stocking, like I said, from Walmart.com. But I have no clue. It's here somewhere. I've had so much crap kind of stacked in a box right here waiting to share with you guys. <sighs> This here, I got an amazing deal on it. It was $15. And she had mispriced it. And she was so sweet to give me that price. Even though she had mispriced it. Because it's a 27 by 28 piece. of I believe it's 28 count. And it's the opal. And of course with the orange stripe you can tell at the bottom in the selvage. You could tell it's by Zweigart. And I'm not going to unfold it all the way. But I plan on dyeing that for some of my projects. Hand dyeing it. Um, and stuff. Now it's driving me insane. Do y'all ever do that? You you know something's around here. And you're like, where is it at? And it just drives you completely bonkers. If I find it before I upload this video, I will attach it to the end. And I'll be like, yes. Okay. I should have cleaned it up first. I have took um, McKenna's, um, kind of took her way of saying, you know, she hits the thrift stores and finds some picture frames and stuff like that. I believe that's what she does. Sometimes she'll buy them new from Hobby Lobby. In her latest video, she, that's what she's done. She has bought them new from Hobby Lobby. And she has, McKenna girl, you have smacked out some finishes, girlfriend. Um, she's been knocking them out. And that girl... She, she's done with one. She's got the frame and she's got it framed by that evening or the next day. Me, my project's been sitting around begging for a frame. So, or to be finished. So, McKenna, you go, girl. Mm. But, anyway, I'll, you will be proud of me, McKenna. And stitching by the late Marlene. Because you two ladies are saving cross-stitch. Or needlework. And this is not as much needlework, but it was too gorgeous to leave behind. Um, and it was professionally framed, but I believe this is a much older piece from maybe 20 or 30 years. Yes, see, as you can tell, it's got the hanger and stuff, and it's got little, the paper. I do not want to take it apart, but I can tell by the matting and stuff, this was definitely professionally framed. I'm going to cover up the price sticker. This is cruel embroidery work done on muslin. It does have a few spots in it. Y'all, this is a big piece. And it is matted. It's double matted with a pretty light pink and a red. to match. It matches this part. I do not like the frame that good. And I'm going to paint it. I bought actual paint. Guess how much, y'all, I paid for this big piece. This is probably a 16 by 20. Gorgeously done. This is this was an awesome needle. I can do this kind of, kind of work. But this was done by an excellent needle person. Y'all, guess how much? Can you see that? It's upside down, I believe. Three ninety nine. Three nine four bucks. Look how beautiful. 
I'm gonna bring you in again so you can see how meticulously this was done. Okay, I do not like the frame. It's like I said, just from the frame alone, there's no no signature on the back. I can feel like what they put in there. To, this was definitely professionally framed, but I think this is an older piece. Just well, there's a few spots here on it, and it takes time to probably get those spots here as brown dots. But that doesn't bother me. I'm going to hang this proudly. Somebody put a lot of time in this, but I bought some uh, paint, and I'm gonna paint it. I, white was going to be too stark for this because of the muted colors, muted tones. It's more muted. So I went with a cream, an off-white cream like color. I want to paint this, but I want this gold piece. I thought about painting, I actually bought the paint for it, and it's about this color red, and I didn't realize, I was trying to pick out a green to match the green to accent. I really wanted to do a silver. I may just wind up painting it all green. But I do not want to take this apart. As you can see, I mean, it's all done really nicely. But I do not like the frame because it really dates the piece, I feel like. I mean, it's that... I don't know. It, I don't think it's real wood. It's kind of like that maybe veneer stuff. Anyhow. So I'm going to paint that. And I'm going to hang it out in my craft room, if not in my bedroom. It will probably go out in my quilting studio. But that is just a stunning piece. Let me bring you in on the leaves. Can you see it? Four bucks. Anyhow, I followed McKenna's lead. Let me set it over here because I don't want it to fall and break. Because it does have the glass in it. Um, Four dollars. Also, I'm not going to show them all. I scored some amazing frames that I'm going to repurpose and repaint and use for framing my cross stitch. A cheaper method. Um, on one of my other videos, I said I was going to get a quote from Jill Renzel. Um, it was on my hummingbird wreath piece. It had the flowers and the hummingbirds, and it's a ten and a half circle, ten and a half inch circle. And she does absolutely amazing, gorgeous work. So much, I mean, we all agree, but we know it's expensive. And it's, is it worth every penny? Absolutely. But is it in everybody's budget? Absolutely not. Um, or at least to the amount I feel comfortable spending on a piece like that. Yes, it's worthy and deserving of my cross stitch. I understand that. But also at the same time, if I can see if I can do it myself and do it cheaper, I'm going to attempt that. If not, you either pay the price or you just don't have the painting and the triple mats. Uh, I got a quote for that piece, and it's a ten and a half inch circle with triple matting. And of course, her not having the piece in her possession, but I did send her a photo of it and gave her the dimensions and what I would like to have done. I said I'd like to have at least one or two hummingbirds that kind of went along with the theme, and from there on, she could do what she wanted with the rest of the design for the painted part that they do around the things. It was $146, $47 just for the, and I wasn't getting it framed. This is just for the matting with the painting, and that's it. No frame, no glass, no nothing. It was $147, I believe, and some change was her rough estimate. If I laced it myself, or pinned it, laced it, got it prepared for, if they had to lace it, it was going to be $176. That's no frame, no mat. And like I said, trust me, I'm not bashing her at all. I'm just saying price-wise, I don't feel that comfortable spending that much money on, on a piece. Granted, if you go and have it framed, you're going to probably spend. A lot of people say she's comparable. I don't have, I haven't had a piece professionally matted and framed in years. Um, and when I did, it wasn't that bad. And even then, I was more, I was broke. I mean, we got better funds available you know now even if i can pay that price but i don't want to pay that price maybe y'all understand what i'm saying some people are more than willing to pay that price and i would love you know i've hinted at my boys especially on the lavender and lace piece or lavender and lace yeah angel of grace i showed you i'd love to have that done i've hinted at my boys like maybe y'all can divide it up 
you and Zan for a present for Christmas or something. Excuse me, but they don't seem too keen on that. Um, I, I can't blame them because I don't seem too keen on paying it either. But I said, whenever I pass, one of you guys can get it. I want you guys to keep it. It's an heirloom. Um, but here's maybe why I don't want to pay that is because my daughter, Alexandra, the one who works, but not the one with fiber, she is an amazing artist. I can do pretty good at art myself. I'm really good with colors and blending. She She's good at it too, but she is just can draw anything. She's self-taught, just like I am and everything. I'm self-taught crosser, so I'm self-taught quilter, self-taught crocheter. I'm self-taught in everything. So here's my deal. I am going to, with these, I bought probably, I've got at least a dozen in various shapes and sizes, whether all square or um, photo frames I found. And Goodwill is where I found that one, my local Goodwill, and that we don't have too many thrift stores. I checked out one and found one frame. I, I liked it decent enough, but it was okay. And I did sell a cross-stitch piece there, but I, it just didn't call to me, so I didn't purchase it. But anyhow, some of these have mats in them. And I thought we would practice, me and her, uh, painting it and stuff around the, to match my piece and go from there. Um, I mean, because I was looking more at the style that Jill, the finished project, projects that she shows on her blog and stuff and that people post... And they're not very intricate. They are really very simple if you look closely at them. Designs, but they're done with the paint and the color and stuff. And if you have a little bit of artistic back, and not, I'm not going to copy hers because I'm going to do mine that represents. I'm gonna, but I'm just saying it doesn't. Um, my phone. I don't know if it cut off. It doesn't look that complicated, at least from my end to my eye for my daughter's eye. Um, so that's where I'm going to go with that. Like I said, those who pay her work is stunning. If you want to spend the funds on that, absolutely. If I felt more comfortable doing it, I would. Um, I just feel like I'd rather give it a shot myself with my daughter and take it from there. And I've kind of drawn this out into a lengthy ex explanation, but I just don't want, you know, no one to get riled up and upset because I'm definitely not you know, say anything in the negative at all. I'm just saying for me personally, and I've always said, do what works best for you. And that's what I'm doing for me. Um, but McKenna, I did take your advice and I hit up Goodwill and I've hit them up several times. And I did see, I have seen a couple more pieces, but I don't know what I would do with them because they don't really, that one, that one was stunning, that roses. And even though it's not cross stitch, it is needlework. Someone did put a ton of time in it. I just wish... And I guess that should teach me to sign the back of mine and date them and stuff because I don't do that stitching wise with my work. I don't I think it's a good idea that you sign them for historical reference value for later in the you know in the years. If it, I just don't like that look on mine. And but I don't mind signing the back of the paper or whatever on the frame thing. I need to remember to do that or attaching something to the back of it. Um, but I did get some. I think a lot of them will work. I'm gonna take them. Um, store them in my quilt studio. Um, but yeah, I should get done with pink lemonade today. I'm going to start the spring free freebie. And from there, I'll go from there. I'm going to get my silk flosses my husband said I could have for Mother's Day ordered. Um, oh, and I'll let you guys know. It, I mean, it may not be anything soon uh, because finishing is never at the top of my list, but it, it should be. Um, Maybe I need to make a month. I can't stop cross stitching, but maybe c concentrate more on getting finishes done. I still got to get all those ornaments I finished into last year and first of this year completed to hang on the tree for this Christmas. Um, I'm just not a great finisher. Um, I mean, by not great, great getting finishes done. Not that I'm not a great finisher. I can finish things pretty. <laughs> It's just that I, I'm not a great get them done, get her done kind of thing. Um, and now I'm kind of rambling. If I do think of anything, I will um, add it on to this video. 
Um, like I said, please, 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 please check out Stitcher's Treasures on Etsy.com. And like I said, I will include those links in the description box. And when I first announced it, the so you can see it on the screen, the actual address, web address. Um, I do have more things to upload. And I do have some brand new uh, cross stitch items. And I would like to get, I don't want to invest all this money into something if, it's not going to take off and do well. <clears throat> um, I'd rather kind of start out small and build it up from there. And I was so, 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 so thrilled um, to get my first uh, sale Sunday evening. Um, it was the Green Bling Needle Minder. Um, I was so, so thrilled with that. That just made my day. So, um, it's just, as I explained in some other videos, I've been a stay-at-home mom since I was two months pregnant with Cody. Jeremy was my firstborn. He was about two and a half, two years old. He was about two years old when I quit work. My husband wanted me to quit, and I did too, to stay home with the kids. We agreed for me to quit work and stay home and have kids. And we just thought we was going to have the two boys, but I wound up getting pregnant with the girls when Cody was seven months old. So I had three in diapers at one stage. Cody was seven months old and I had brand new baby girl twins. So, feasibly-wise, it did not pay, at that point in our life, for me to work and pay for four children for daycare. And then, about a year or so later, well, yeah, because Jeremy was still home for a good while. But he was, the, of course, the first. And there was three years and two days exactly separating Cody and Jeremy. Cody, uh, Jeremy's uh, um, the 13th, his birthday, and Cody's is the 15th in the same month. The girls is four days after Christmas on the 29th. So, when we do things, we do things. Um, but, I've been at home. And over the years, my health, as you, I've explained some, is not good or conducive. And, I can't stand on my feet for, like, really long, long times of periods. Uh, my feet and ankles swell really bad and stuff. Um, so, this is a viable way for me to create, uh, I love art, I love creating, um, so, and being artistic, and just, that's why I love cross stitch, that's why I love quilting, that's why I love make, I love making the needle miners, and dyeing fabric, that is so fun for me, um, I don't have exact time frame, like I said, I want to kind of start out small, and just go from there, um, uh, but it, even if you just take a look, and, and like, Keep taking a look to something you find. Like I said, I do have some. I do have a few of the really blingy, blingy, like needle miners I need to get up um, and stuff. But I will add things. I do have, like I said, some also some brand new stock. Um, but I appreciate you guys taking a look. And I really, really appreciate all the sweet and kind comments. Hi, Bev. Bev, um, Teddy Bear Crafts, I believe it is. She's always so sweet to comment. Um... And all the other comments. I'm not just calling her out. And, I mean, she comments about every video of mine. Um, and everybody else who's commented. I responded to a couple last night. I always try to respond to each and every one. Even if it's just, thank you for your sweet comment or your kind words. Uh, thank you for watching my... I mean, even... But, I mean, I try to comment back, relate to what you're talking to me about also. But if someone just says, great video, I'll just go, thank you so much for watching. I mean, it's just kind, you know, to res if they take the time to comment on your video, I th I feel personally it's respectful to at least thank them. And to acknowledge them that I am seeing and hearing you. I want to thank you for all my subscribers. Um, I think I'm a little at over 400. I believe I'm going to do a giveaway um, when I reach a certain number. i got to figure out what that number is. Um, I don't know if we're going to do wait to 500 or wait till 1,000. 1,000 seems kind of long uh, way um, and stuff, but uh, I may wait and do one at 500. I'll see. On my next video, I'll kind of think about it and iron out the details in my mind a little. But do I do thank all my subscribers and all the people who watch my video and all the comments. You guys are so sweet. All of you. Um, I enjoy watching so many of you. Um... And I may not, I try to comment on some, but if I'm late, lots of time, here's what I'll do. I'll go to bed every night, and before I go to sleep every night, 95% of the time, I lay there and watch Floss Tube until I get sleepy. 
Um, there's some that just when I first started watching that I've got to watch as soon as they put a video out. It's no disrespect. It's just the way it is. And I just, you know. But like someone, I can't remember who was talking on their Floss 2 video. I am so sorry. Um, there's some people who like to cause drama. I know there was a whole bunch of group drama here on one of the Facebook groups. I am in it. I didn't see the drama at all. But from what I gathered from other Floss tubers, this is our video. And how we present it is just part, of, really a part of who we are and our personality. It's just, a lot of us is just nervous. I remember in the very beginning, for the first handful of videos, I was so nervous, I wouldn't even sh go on camera. Um, now I feel like, you know, I'm more natural at it. I feel more comfortable at it. And a lot of how I present, like sometimes with my accent, I don't know if you guys like my accent. There's nothing I can change about that. Um... How I sometimes finagle and f up words, to be quite honest. That's just me. Sometimes a lot of that's a part of my... Sometimes words don't come out good. Or there was a time where I would stutter a little bit trying to get words out. Sometimes I could think of the word I want to say, but I couldn't verbally. Because at, at one point, this was really bad where I make that too much fluid. Um and stuff I can't help that uh, people would say um it's just a part of how we handle our sentencing it's just we can't help that so no one forces anybody to watch anything whether it be on TV whether it be on your computer whether it be here on floss tube no one forces you to watch anything if you're gonna watch it and complain that's your fault so not mine. <laughs> I'm just saying because of all that, you know, and I didn't have, I don't have a bone in the dog fight. I'm just saying though, I mean, I can, a lot of the times it's our personality where we're nervous enough coming on here and stuff for whatever reason. And how we present our videos is just part of us. So, um, it's just who we are and that's what you're getting. And some people don't like to hear about life, your life, and other people don't like to see um, haul, and other people only want to see what you're working on in completed projects. People, fast forward or don't watch. Um, I haven't received any, and straight off, I haven't received any kind of comments or any bad stuff or any of that. And if you notice in the beginning, I start out saying um a lot more, and then when I get more comfortable with the video, the ums... Or a lot less so that just shows you I am still do get nervous but not as bad I'm here to share my works and even a little promotion <laughs> to get to my Etsy shop because I'm trying to do something for me to feel like I'm making a viable little bit even if it's a minute income for myself um, and just mainly to share and, and keep up with what I'm doing and where I'm at in my life if I want to look back on it and I'm just sharing it with you guys too so please people be respectful be understanding have love share love we're all human we all make mistakes um, and just treat people that's the way I have always said just treat people the way you want to be treated some people may want to be treated like crap but 90% 95% maybe more want to be treated with respect and love so please people just do that um didn't mean to sound all preachy on you guys <laughs> but I love y'all <laughs> please do subscribe and like and comment and I will try to get this upload next day or two and I hope you guys have a wonderful stitchy week hopefully you will not be so long in between videos but do keep in mind I am doing better than I was when I first started my YouTube channel I don't know when my YouTube anniversary is um but I had made one or two videos and stopped and had like an eight month or maybe about a year in between and I really like I really want to share with people my stuff so I do am going to put out videos but do keep in mind that there is times where life health gets in the way um and stuff like that and i'm doing things for myself like the stitching and stuff but y'all take care and have a great week and we will talk soon bye y'all